Now, my first guest today is one of Africa's best-known business development strategists, Dr. Nikki Okoye. He's actually based in the U.S., although he spends a lot of time in Africa, and is the president and CEO of the Nikki Okoye Organization, which over the years has supported emerging market countries and businesses in Africa and the Caribbean. Dr. Okoye's expertise in entrepreneurship and technical strategies and policy making and execution has led to increased economic activity and the creation of jobs in many companies and countries. He regularly consults for the the corporate world on business strategy and global capital. His infectious enthusiasm for national economic development has given many across the continent and the diaspora a new appreciation for growth. His career is now being marked by a determination to help businesses design strategies and critical adjustments that would support them during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Here he is in full cry. Even without COVID-19 pandemic, the world was already heading for major disruptions in businesses and investment as a result of the complexities of the fourth industrial revolution. The pandemic just made the disruptions more evident and even more urgent. We must now look at investment strategy all over again. The old investment models will not work anymore. It doesn't matter whether you are a personal investor with a small investment portfolio or you're just trying to start a new small business or you are an asset manager managing a billion dollars or you may even be an executive of a major conglomerate. Whatever is the case, you are now compelled to adjust your investment strategy, realign your priorities and reappraise your value centers. Well, that's a little snippet of Dr. Nikki Okoye, and I'm delighted to say that the man himself, Dr. Okoye, joins me now from our studios in Lagos. Uh, good to see you, Nikki. Yeah, hi, how are you doing? It's good, good. to see you. Good. Um, in, in this era of COVID-19, with economic activity slowed across the world, we just saw the UK enter recession today. Is it time for businesses to fundamentally reassess their priorities? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think that the COVID-19 pandemic has simply put the disruptions that we expected from the 21st century and the fourth industrial revolution, it, it, it put those disruptions on a rocket ship, if you will. And, and so the entire marketplace is beginning to look totally different. We, we actually don't know what's going to come out on the other side, but we do know that things have completely changed. Some industries will no longer exist as they were before. And some industries are taking off. So what, what that means basically is that everybody in the business community, whether it's small, big, medium, we, we all need to realign our investment strategy. We all need to look again at the marketplace and we need to reappraise our value centers and coordinate exactly where we, we put our most resources going forward. Well, we'll talk so, about... So I, your, I, I your, think we'll, that all businesses, we all need to take a step back. Executives need to take a step back, look at the entire landscape again of business and, and, and do a complete overhaul of, of, of their, not just their business model and business strategies, but even the strategies that, that coordinate their personal, their personal management, their, their, their office space. A lot of offices might not be necessary anymore. Uh, and the whole landscape is going to be different. Well, you're certainly right about that. I mean, because, I mean, the coronavirus has affected all of us in, in, you know, in one way or another. I mean, how would you say, Dr. Okoye, that it's affected the businesses that you normally deal with? Well, that, that's an excellent question. I, I think a lot of our clients have been affected in different ways. So, for instance, we do have some clients that have a large office buildings and large office blocks and they made some very good projections as to the kind of capacity and rental income that they will earn for 2020, 2021. 
Uh, many of those office buildings are empty today and they're going to be empty for the foreseeable future because a lot of companies are reassessing their need for office space. With the work, for home, work from home strategy that a lot of companies have implemented, we have now realized, a lot of companies have realized that you don't need that much office space anymore. So it means that office buildings and those who have invested in office space are going to need to re-look at their, their entire investment strategy altogether. When the demand dries up for a specific service or a specific product, then it means that your business model has completely changed. And that's just one segment of the industrial landscape, uh, some of the segments that we deal with. In the aviation sector, it's a totally different story. Uh, we, we do have clients that were about to set up an airline this year. They had actually made specific uh, down payments on, 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 on aircraft. And uh, you have all the large uh, aviation uh, uh, aircraft companies trying to dispose of aircraft that they have. So it means that the aviation industry uh, uh, as a whole is suffering, especially for those who have either acquired new aircraft or for those who are manufacturing aircraft. And so before that industry comes back, we're looking at about two to three years. And, and that means that if you have a, a firm contract that you've paid on, you've made a down payment on aircraft, you expect to pay your you're going to be in a very serious uh, challenge as far as your financials are concerned. Uh, there are many other industries that I, I can mention that some of the folks that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but the entire landscape is showing, is showing challenges. But it's not all bad news. There's a lot of opportunity as well. On the, so there's a flip side to the challenges. So on one side, you have challenge industries like aviation, uh, real estate, and so on. And on the other side, you have industries that are going to flourish and they're going to thrive in a post-COVID-19 uh, environment. Uh, and some of those industries, of course, include technology. Uh, technology is, is taking a, a whole new spectrum. I mean, people are looking at technology and digital transformation in a totally new way. Every single company that exists on the face of this earth is going to need to have a digital strategy. And so those folks who are in the technology business are going to have a very good next two to three years, if you will. Yes, but, but let's focus on the ones that are not going to be doing very well. You mentioned the aviation sector, for instance, and some of them, as you mentioned, are your clients. I mean, you're there to design business strategies and critical adjustments that would support them during this pandemic. What would you advise companies like that to do? Well, the first thing is to renegotiate with their uh, creditors. Uh, that is what we're doing at the moment. Um, some of those uh, credit facilities, simply the money to pay for aircraft that you have already acquired and you have a monthly or quarterly commitment, the, the, the money is simply not there anymore. And there is no market for aircraft as we speak. Uh, so a lot of folks, a lot of the airlines that have even been in operation for years are looking for who to dispose of, uh, uh, who to offload their aircraft on. So, so, uh, so the first uh, strategy is, of course, to renegotiate with, with finances. In some cases, the folks who you acquire the aircraft from are willing to take those aircraft back because there were some uh, alter clauses in the, uh, in the agreement and in those kind of cases, it's an easier way to exit that, stra that, uh, that strategy. But we're advising them if, you c if they can renegotiate with the finances, then they need to pivot their, uh, their business strategy completely. Uh, some areas of the transportation industry will do very well. One of them is logistics. You know, so if you have aircraft that you need to deploy, then maybe we need to put those aircraft into the logistics aspect of aviation because uh, the logistics part is going to blow up. It's, it's already uh, um, growing exponentially, if you will. Uh, so logistics in terms of moving goods and services across country or across the continent of Africa or across the world. So a lot of uh, logistics, aviation logistics companies are going to do very well. So we are advising them to pivot to the logistics side of the aviation uh, spectrum. Uh, that way, that business is still going to grow. And that's uh, just for them. 
Right, okay. Well, that sounds jolly good. Um, but we've got about a minute and a half before we take a break. So let me ask you this, uh, Dr. Okoye. On a personal note, as you watched the coronavirus take hold and ravage the world and the economies of countries that you are so passionate uh, about, did you feel fear? And, you know, to some extent, were you at a loss as to how you were going to advise businesses and governments to help them pick up the pieces? Absolutely. I mean, it would be dishonest to say that there was no apprehension across the board, not just for me, but for most of my clients, uh, for friends, for family. Everybody was confused in the beginning stages. But after a few weeks, you know, I, I, I told myself that uh, complaining is not a strategy. <laughs> you know, we can't sit back and complain. We are going to come out of this still alive. And if we're going to come out of this alive, then we need to have a business that will sustain us and keep us going after the entire pandemic and the crisis is over. So in that case, we started looking at what we could do post-COVID. And so if you look at some of the things that we are doing with our clients and personally uh, as, as a consultant and as a, a business strategy expert, our mind and our mindset is already post-COVID. We're looking at how to take advantage of the disruptions that are expected post-COVID. So we know that there's a crisis. We appreciate that there's a crisis. We have, we have been affected by the crisis fundamentally, and, but we must now figure out how to take advantage of the crisis. As the Chinese will say, never, never waste a good crisis. Okay, uh, on that note, I'll ask you to stay with us, uh, Dr. Okoye. You're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead, as we continue our chat with the business development strategist, Dr. Nikki Okoye. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Enyagorbo. Now, the global spread of coronavirus continues its relentless march. Every country is being hit, and the virus is no respecter of borders or businesses. The economic damage is just as bad, and many, if not most, businesses have been frozen in their tracks. Economists say there is no doubt that a global recession is coming. The only questions appear to be how long and how bad. Every business from the smallest is now in a fight for survival. So what will it take to survive the greatest economic shock in recent times? Okay, let's face it. The only constant in the world today is change. The world has experienced the agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, and we are currently in the digital revolution driven by this era of connectivity. We are fast moving towards a new world order. If you and your business aren't aligned to reinvent yourself, then you will fail. This is not the time to worry about uncertainties. You need to be on top of your game. We are not in the business of walkthroughs. We don't jog, no, we sprint. Right now, you have to be Batman in a business suit. The beast in you must come out now. If you are comfortable with the status quo, frankly, this message is not for you. But if you want to achieve eight to 10 figure revenues and work your company's way to a multi-million dollar valuation, even during these challenging times, well then, we speak the same language. We are champions of the universe. We are masters of commerce, market penetration, and global investment strategy. We point you to where the money is, and we will work with you till you get it right. That's a bit of a plug there for my guest, uh, who is, of course, Dr. Nikki Okoye, who's been busy designing strategies that will help businesses to thrive during and after the pandemic. And Dr. Okoye is with me from our Lagos studios. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. Um, let's bring it a bit closer to home, because I know your, your organization is actually based in the United States, although you travel all around the world. Um, what do you think the economic landscape will look like in Nigeria, for, for instance, when this pandemic is over? 
Well, it's a good question. Uh, Nigeria, for instance, has attempted to uh, invest in stimulus packages, economic stimulus packages that could keep the economy going. Um, the jury is still out as to whether that strategy has been implemented properly and whether we have been able to gain the effects. Uh, just to give you a comparison, the United States, for instance, has in, invested about three trillion, trillion with a T, three trillion dollars in stimulus packages. Some of that went to individuals in form of a check or, or, or credit to their account. Some of that went to companies. And some of that went to SME, small business organizations, in order to pay for salaries of their workers. In, the, in Europe, the European Commission just voted about $800 billion, a stimulus package for businesses across the European Union. And so in Nigeria, whereas the CBN came out with a two trillion naira economic stimulus packages for businesses, uh, that disbursement has not yet commenced. What the government has told us is that they have commenced disbursement at the lower level, which is uh, for folks that they say got uh, palliatives in terms of uh, feeding the re really, really poor people. So businesses in Nigeria are suffering at the moment, and they, they need help. They need a lot of help because we don't want the economy to collapse on our head. Uh, we expect that the government intervention will be a little bit more aggressive, uh, which means identify those industries that have suffered the most and, uh, you know, uh, reduce the bureaucracy uh, and the red tape that is uh, currently uh, in place that uh, businesses are suffering from getting uh, these um, extra uh, stimulus and support. Now, having said that, uh, in terms of the industrial landscape, if we take government intervention out of the equation, what we will see is that the lifestyles and the choices of consumers are going to change. Uh, consumers are currently uh, spending more time at home, uh, which means that there's a lot of ordering going on online. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, businesses have sprung up that are now delivering groceries, uh, things as simple as groceries, you know, uh, weekly groceries to the home. Uh, in that case, that means delivery businesses are springing up. Uh, those businesses that have uh, bike riders that can deliver door to door uh, have sprung up, and there's a lot of demand in that space. Um, in addition to that, you have a lot of businesses that are springing up that are providing online education. So again, based on the fact that people are spending more time at home, there's a lot of software that has been developed as well that is supporting work from home applications. So businesses that want to keep their employees at home, but they need some form, form of a platform. Their employees can stay at home and be monitored and measured in terms of productivity. Uh, software development companies are coming out with such applications and they're being deployed and it's happening across the board. Um, then there are actually some companies that are springing up. Uh, there's one called uh, uh, Waka With Me, you know, where they're, they're providing valet services for people. You, you don't need to travel to a, a distant part of the country if you want something done. If you want a transcript from your former school, you call them, they get somebody in that town to go to your school and make the application on your behalf. So you don't need to get on a plane or get in a bus. So again, you're gonna see reduced demand in transportation services, increased demand in valet and support services. Uh, so the entire economy is gonna change. The demand of the consumer is gonna change. And those of us in business, need to look at the landscape again and decide, okay, where am I gonna put my next investment? Do I need to change my business model completely and you know, I'll realign it with the current reality and the current situation? Or do I need to start a new business totally and completely uh, uh, abandon the one I have done before? Because uh, some businesses are gonna wake up and find that they have a bridge, their business is a bridge to nowhere. The market has totally disappeared for the kind of business or service they were offering in the past. Uh, so that, that's just a, a tidbit on what we expect in the Nigerian economy, the Nigerian landscape. Well, to be honest, we're not dramatically surprised because, I mean, that was a, to some extent expected. But I think you made a very crucial point there, uh, which is the fact that the Nigerian government is not yet 
um, disbursing the, uh, pack the stimulus packages, the palliatives that they promised to give to businesses. And that means that many businesses are running their companies with no income at all. And that's something that businesses just don't do. I mean, you don't run a business without some form of income. That's obviously created havoc, more so because everyone is affected including possibly even the government that would normally come in to help. I mean, what do you say in those circumstances? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, a lot of businesses are running on fumes at the moment. <laughs> so when I say running on fumes, it means that if you're driving a car and the petrol in the car is finished, it's just the remaining fumes in the fuel tank that is still keeping the car going. Uh, that is what is happening to a lot of businesses across the board. But in all fairness to the government, the government is equally running on fumes uh, because uh, if the IMF did not come to the rescue of the government, remember that oil price went down to zero in April. And so government's main uh, income was, is, uh, and it still is, dependent on uh, crude oil sales. And when oil price crashed in April, uh, March, April, and, and to some extent May, uh, the government revenue almost uh, disappeared. And so IMF stepped up to the plate, uh, promised Nigeria $3.4 billion. I believe that money came in a few weeks ago. Uh, World Bank has also pledged some funds. I think that money is coming in. So um, Nigeria as a nation is also, um, I would say, challenged in, in terms of its, its access to revenue. And because we're not as rich as European or the United States where we can just print money, uh, which is what those, some of those economies are doing, they can do that because they have a robust uh, balance sheet. Uh, for the U.S., for instance, the right. whole world uh, depends on the U.S. dollar. And okay. most countries uh, reserve their reserve currency. Is, okay, is, is uh, Nikki, I'm so really so sorry to, to interrupt to you there. My, my profound apologies, but it's been absolutely brilliant talking with you. I mean, I could talk to you forever. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but I really appreciate your talking to us. Dr. Nikki Okoye there, who is a business development strategist, talking to me from our studios in Lagos.